So classification and diagnosis of schizophrenia. So you need to be aware of the symptoms of schizophrenia, so the negative and positive symptoms, and how we would diagnose schizophrenia. So if we look at positive symptoms, so they are symptoms that appear to reflect an excess or distortion of normal function. So the word positive um, is a bit misleading. It's not saying that it's a good thing. So they're not um, positive symptoms as in they're beneficial. They are simply symptoms that you would not expect to see in a person without schizophrenia. So the two that the spec requires you to know are delusions and hallucinations. So delusions are bizarre beliefs that seem real to the person with schizophrenia, but they're not. So they're bizarre um, beliefs and thoughts. Now, these can be about paranoia, so delusions of persecution, so that they believe everyone is out to get them. And it could be um, delusions in regards to their own power and importance, so delusions of grandeur, so that they have an inflated sense of their own, their own importance. So sometimes they might believe that they're the son of God or... Um, they are being communicated by God. Now hallucinations are unreal perceptions in the environment. Now typically they are auditory, so that's um, hearing voices, but they could also be visual, so they might see lights, objects or faces. They might smell things that aren't there and they can also be tactile. So one common one is they might feel like the blood bugs are crawling on or in their skin. Now negative um, symptoms are a diminu diminution or a loss of normal function. So they are things that you would expect to be present, but they're not. So for example, poverty of speech. So that is characterized by a lessening of speech fluency, productivity, and thought to reflect slowing or blocked thoughts. So you'd expect a person without schizophrenia to be able to talk um, fluently, but a person with schizophrenia um, isn't able to have that thought process. So they um, talk in a way that is not as fluent. Now, abolition is a reduction or inability to initiate goal-directed behaviour. So they might not seem very ambitious. They might sit in the house for hours on day doing nothing. So they can't... Um, start a goal or work towards a goal. So if we were to look at some past paper questions that there have been, there's this one which is an application type question. So two years ago Jenny was diagnosed with schizophrenia, she's been taking typical antipsychotic drug and there has been an improvement in her positive symptoms. However, she still suffers negative symptoms and side effects. Her psychiatrist wants to change her medication from typical antipsychotics to one of atypical antipsychotics and has been suggested cognitive behavioural therapy. So this was a series of questions that followed on. So there were some questions in regards to atypical medication and um, cognitive behavioural therapy. But one of the follow-on questions was outline one negative symptom of schizophrenia. So you could expect Jenny to have speech poverty, so she might not be talking in a very fluent way. And that could be down to blocks in her thought processes. Equally, we could expect her to have abolition, which is the inability to um, initiate and persist at and maintain goal-orientated behaviour. So she might sit around for hours on end, not really doing anything. So it's only one symptom, so make sure you um, meet that demand characteristic of the uh, examination question. But it's two marks, so you're going to have to do a point and evidence and point or expand. So you have to say what one symptom is and then provide an example or expand on what it is. So diagnosis then. Now there's two ways in which schizophrenia can be diagnosed. And you have the DSM-5, which is typically used in America. Now that requires a person to show two or more criteria A symptoms. So criteria A symptoms are delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, grossly disorganized and catatonic behavior, negative symptoms such as um, speech poverty. Now, if those delusions are bizarre, only one characteristic or criteria A symptom 
is needed. Equally, it also requires a person to display social and occupational dysfunction in one or more major areas of functioning. So that could be interpersonal relationships, self-care, so that would be your criteria B. Now it also has criteria C, which is the duration. So they need to show continuous signs of this disturbance for at least six months, including the onset, including at least one month, sorry, for the criteria A symptom. So that's the diagnostic manual that is used in America. Now, typically in the UK and elsewhere, the ICD-10 is used. Now, that requires only one criteria A symptom if delusions are bizarre or hallucinations involve um, a voice offering a running commentary of the person or they have two or more voices that hold a conversation.